Hey everyone, in this video, we'll explore how to chat with your CSV files. Yes, you heard that right. We are turning those rows and columns into meaningful conversations that derive insights and decisions and that too using the amazing Gemini Pro. Using this application, you will be able to upload any CSV file using the user interface which will be created by the Streamlit application and then you can easily interact with your CSV file using the Gemini Pro. And in this way, you can easily perform data analysis on your CSV files. So let's start the action. I've created a new project and inside the project, I have a file called requirements.txt that contains all the packages that we'll be needing in this project. We need the Langchain, Streamlight, Langchain, Google Gen AI and Chroma DB in order to create this project. So go ahead to your terminal and install all of these packages at once in your project. So after you have successfully downloaded all the packages, the next thing is to import the required libraries from it. So in my app.py file, I will create the front end of our application and for that I'm going to use the Streamlit library. So I'm going to import Streamlit as SD. Then we also need to have a CSV loader. So I'm going to go ahead and from the langchain.documents.loaders CSV, I'm going to import the CSV loader. And I am also going to import temp file as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and create the front end of my application and all the components of the front end will be placed inside the main function. So inside this main function, firstly, I want to set the title of my page. So I'm going to use streamlit.title function inside which I'm going to pass chat with CSP using the Gemini Pro. So this is going to be the title of my page. Then in order to be able to upload CSV files into our project, we need to have a file uploader. So I've created a sidebar and inside the sidebar, I'm creating a file uploader. The label of the file uploader is going to be choose a CSV file and it is going to accept CSV files. Any file which will be uploaded using the file uploader will be saved inside the variable called uploaded file. So once a CSV file will be uploaded, the next thing will be to load the data of the CSV file and for that we have to use the CSV loader. We have already imported CSV loader. Now let's see how you can actually initialize the CSV loader from the Langchain package. But in order to initialize the CSV loader, you need to have the path of the file which the user has uploaded. So there is no direct way of getting the path of the file. So we are going to write some lines of code in order to get the path of the uploaded file. So let's go ahead and do it. Firstly, I am checking that if the uploaded file is not none, which means that the file has been uploaded by the user, then we are going to use the temp file because the CSV loader only accepts the file path. So I am going to use the temp file for that I have imported temp file. So here using the temp file, I am going to call the name temporary file and delete is set to be false and the name of the file is going to be the temp file. Then inside this temp file, I am going to write the contents of the uploaded file. Okay, so firstly, using the temp file, I will be creating a new temporary file by the name temp underscore file. Then I am going to use its write function to write the contents of the uploaded file inside the temp file. And once we have the temp file, we can simply use temp file dot name to get the path of the temporary file. So once the user will upload the file, it will be saved in the file uploader. After that, we will create a temporary file and load the data of the uploaded file inside the temporary file and get its path. So once we have the path, next we have to initialize the CSV loader. So let's do it. So I'm going to say CSV loader inside it. Firstly, you have to provide the file path, which is actually this temp file path that we have just fetched. I am setting the encoding to be UTF-8 and the CSV arguments are that delimiter is the comma because it is a comma separated file. Okay, so our CSV loader is initialized. Now we will load the data of the uploaded file inside the CSV loader. For that, we are going to use CSV loader dot load function and it is going to load all the data of the CSV file whose path is present inside the CSV loader inside that new variable called data. So all of this is code is about the file uploader and uploading the file and fetching the data and loading it into a CSV loader. Now we also need to have the component in order to query our CSV file. So for that, I'm going to create a new text input. The message on the text input is going to be your message and whatever user will enter will be saved inside the variable called user input. And just for testing purpose, I'm printing user input as well. Then once the user has added the data inside the text input, the next thing is to pass it to the function that is actually going to generate the response for us. For now, 
I am simply going to set response equal to response and I am going to write the response on the user interface because we have not actually created the code for the backend so just for testing purpose I am setting the response to be equal to response now let's head to our terminal and quickly run our application in order to see the front end of our application hit enter okay so this is the front end of our application this is the title of the page that says chat with csv using gemini pro here we have the sidebar inside the sidebar we have a file uploader which allows us to upload the csv files so if i click on browse files and upload a file you can see that file has been saved and once the file is saved then we have the chat box saying your message so if I write anything here and hit enter, it is going to show me the response because this we this is what we have set to be displayed. All right, so our application interface looks good now. The only thing that is left is to write the code for the backend. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna head to my project directory and I'm going to add a new Python file. I'm gonna call it utils and it is going to contain the method which will contain the code for the backend of our application. Inside this file, firstly, we are going to import all the necessary libraries from the packages that we have previously installed. So these are all the libraries that we will be using. So I'm quickly going to go through all of these. Firstly, we are using the recursive character text splitter to split the text into different chunks. Then for the vector store, I'm going to be using Chroma. Then we have the Google generative AI embeddings to create the embeddings of our text. We have the prompt template in order to generate the prompt. To run the chain, we have the load QA chain. OS, Gen AI, and chat Google Generative AI in order to interact with the Gemini Pro. Okay, so firstly, inside this file, after importing all the libraries, I am going to set the value for the Google API key. So I am going to set it for the genai.configure and as the environment variable too. Setting the environment variable and the Gen AI configuration is important because this Gen AI will be used to interact with the Gemini Pro using the chat Google Generative AI. And in order to create the Google Generative AI embeddings, we need to have the Google API key set as the environment variable. Alright, so once this is done, the next thing is to create a function. So I'm going to create a new function by the name getModernResponse. And this function is going to take two parameters. First one is going to be the uploaded file. And the second one is going to be the query which the user has entered from the user interface. So the purpose of this function is to actually get the response from the Gemini Pro for the provided query. Inside this, we have the file. So firstly, we need to split the contents of our file into manageable chunks. So for that, I'm going to use the langchain.textsplitter library. And from that, I'm going to use the recursive character text splitter in order to split the contents of our file into manageable chunks. Okay, so firstly, I'm initializing the recursive character text splitter. This is the chunk size and the chunk overlap. And then I'm going to create the context by joining the page contents of all the pages in the file. Okay, so once the context is created, now we are going to pass this context to the text splitter. So using the text splitter dot split text function and providing it the context, which contains actually all the pages of the file. Then this split text function is going to split the content, which is present inside this context variable into manageable chunks of fixed size and the data chunks will be stored inside the variable called data. Then using this data, we need to create the vectors and for vectors, we need to have embeddings. So in this video, we are going to be using the Google Generative AI embeddings. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize it. Here I'm using the embeddings 001 model of the Google Generative AI embeddings. And using this embeddings and the chroma, I'm going to create vectors of this data chunk. So for that, I'm going to use the chroma.frontText function. Inside it, you have to pass your data chunks, which is present inside this data variable and the embeddings object, which is the Google Generative AI embeddings. And I'm also using the as retriever function because I want it to be a searcher object. So this chroma is going to generate the vectors as retrievers from the provided data chunks and using the embeddings and all of this will be stored inside the searcher variable. Then in order to get all the vectors inside a single object, I am going to define a dummy query which says which employee has the maximum salary and using the searcher, I am going to call its get relevant documents function inside which I am going to pass this question. So in this way, using this line of code, we are going to create the embedding for each data chunk and we are storing it inside a new vector store. And then in order to get all the vectors from the vector store, 
I am using the get relevant document function and passing a dummy query to it and it is going to fetch all of the vectors which are present inside this vector store and they will be stored inside the variable called records. So if you want to see how the code up to now is working, so I'm going to head back to my app.py file and once the user has added the input, I'm going to call the get model response function inside which in place of file I am going to pass the data and in place of query I am going to pass the user input also it is giving here error because this function is inaccessible from the app.py file so I am going to head to the top of the file and I am going to write from utils import so now you will see that the error has disappeared and we can easily access this get model response function so once the user will enter the query we are going to pass our data file which is loaded inside a csv loader and the user input to this function and this function is firstly going to split the file into manageable chunks of fixed size then out of these chunks we are going to use the embeddings of each data chunk and store it inside the vector store and then in order to have the data of all the vectors inside a single variable we are going to use this get relevant document function and it is going to return us all the vectors which are present inside the switcher vector store and once we print it, you're going to see all the data which is present inside our CSV file. So now I'm going to open my browser and I'm going to rerun the application. Okay, so here is the response. And if I head to my terminal, you can see that this is all the data which is present inside our vector store in the form of vectors. And it's, it is actually the data which is present inside the CSV file that we have uploaded using the file uploader. So this means that up to now our code is working fine. Now. Using these vectors, we are going to interact with the Gemini Pro and load the chain by passing the vectors and our query. So now, let's go ahead and do all of that. Now, in order to interact with the chat Google Generative AI, we need to have a prompt template in which we are going to define it that what he should do inside the query that we are going to pass. So I'm going to create a prompt template. Inside it, I am going to say you have to answer the question from the provided context and make sure that you provide all the details. And as part of the prompt template, I am going to pass it the context, which is actually going to be all the vectors which are present inside this record and the question, which is actually the query which the user has entered using the user interface. And it is going to generate the answer for us. So now I am actually going to initialize the prompt template of the lang chain and inside it we have to pass the template which is actually going to be the prompt template which is this string then inside it we have passed the context and the question so the input variables are the context and the question so once we run the chain we will pass the context and the question on the chain so before actually initializing and running the chain let's initialize our chat generative ai so i'm going to use chat google generative ai the model of it is going to be the gemini pro and I am setting the temperature to be 0 0.9 because I want the response to be very creative and unique. And this model will be stored inside the variable called model. Now I am going to use this model and the prompt to initialize the chain. So from the lang chain package, I am going to use the load QA chain. Inside it, we are going to pass the model which is actually the Gemini Pro. The chain type is going to be stuff and for the prompt, we are going to pass this prompt template that we have just initialized. Now the only thing that is left is to run the chain. So I am going to run the chain by passing it the input documents and the question. So the context actually refers to the input documents which are actually this records variable that contains all the vectors which we have fetched from the vector store. So for the context we are going to pass our vector store which are actually the embeddings and then for the question we are going to pass the query which we are fetching from the function parameter okay so once we pass the query and the records we are setting return only outputs to true so once this chain will run it is going to generate the response for us using the gemini pro and from the response we are going to print the output text which will contain the answer to our prompt okay so once we have generated the response now we also want to display it on the user interface so i'm going to head back to my app.py file and here in place of response, I'm going to call this function here because it is returning us the response and this function takes the data and the user input as the parameter. And that's the entire code for this project. We have two files, app.py file containing the front end of our application and we have the utils.py file which contains a function called getModelResponse that takes the uploaded file and the query as a parameter and generates the response for us. So now 
let's go ahead and run our application to see the output so here i have the browser opened i'm going to go ahead and rerun it now i'm going to click on the browse files button this is the file which is employees.csv which i'm going to upload and once you upload the file your text input will appear so i'm going to prompt it which employee has the maximum salary and what is the value so i want the name of the employee having the maximum salary and i also want the value of the maximum salary hit enter and you can see that it has provided us that stephen king has the maximum salary of 24000 so if i now change maximum salary to be minimum salary and want to find its value hit enter so it is showing me that hazel has the minimum salary and the value is 2200 now let's go ahead and give it another prompt this time i'm gonna ask it what is the average salary of the employees hit enter and you can see that it is saying that the provided context does not contain information so i'm gonna change my prompt and this time i'm gonna ask it how many employees have manager id equals to 101 so it is giving me that 11 employees have 101 manager id now let's give it another prompt and this time i'm gonna change the manager id to the department id and i'll set it value to be 50. hit enter and you will see that 25 employees have department id 50. now i'm gonna write another prompt so here in the vectors you can see that we have an employee named hazel and this is the last name of the employee so I'm going to come back to my user interface and I'm going to prompt it. What is the last name of the employee having first name Hazel? Hit enter and it is going to show you that this is the last name of Hazel. So let's verify it. And yeah, you can see that this exactly is the last name of the employee having first name Hazel. Now instead of last name, I'm going to see what is the email of the employee having the first name Hazel. Hit enter and you can see that it has provided me the value and it is exactly the same value which we, we have fetched from the vectors now let's go ahead and give it another prompt this time i'm gonna ask how many employees have the salary equal to 2200 so let's hit enter and see what is the response so it has provided that four employees have salary equal to 2200 that's all for this video i hope that you enjoyed this project as much as i did